Welcome, everybody, to the live stream. Thank y'all so much again for stopping by today. Why don't more men travel for leisure? Let's talk about that. Again, this is your live stream. Whatever you want to talk about, put it in the comments. Shout out to Jacob Tanjay, Michael Beach of Life. I know you're, on, you're going to be on here. Thank y'all for what y'all do to keep this a safe and respectable live stream. Welcome to my new viewers and subscribers. This is your first live stream. Also, anybody's going to be catching this on replay. Of course, my old heads, as Leroy Day says, hey, big cow, I'm visiting the Philippines in 2023. How can I contact you to see if there's availability for me to visit you in St. Carlos? Just hit me up on my email, Michael Beach of Life. If you're on here, put my email up. What's up, Michael? Another old head, Michael Alexander. There's Jacob Tanjay. What's up, Yusuf? Yeah, the peso is 54.45. And that's still great. Okay, don't don't complain about that. I know the playoffs are on today. I usually catch the uh, highlights. But I want to just, before I get started on this topic, go over, you know, my, my, my last video that I was talking about. Uh, I believe we're reaching the end of an era. I think a lot of people miss the point of that vlog. What I was talking about is two, two foreigners over here with YouTube channels are in hot water for, you know, basically dealing with Filipinas and, you know, dating. And I said, since I believe my humble opinion is foreigners make the best dating videos on the subject, seeing what's going to happen to them or what's happened to them, less and less foreigners are going to make those type of videos. So we're going to be left with a bunch of crap. And you see it out there. That's what I'm talking about. The end of error. It doesn't mean that people aren't going to continue to make those videos because they are. Listen, I'm not blaming Filipinos because they learned it from us. Okay? But it's like anything else over here. If you open up a sorry, sorry store, somebody else is going to open up one. They know they're talking about women interviewing young, beautiful Filipinas and talking about dating and all that other stuff, it's going to bring in the money, man. It's going to bring in the views. They're going to basically be rich overnight. I'm not knocking them for that. I'm just telling you that I'm, I'm backing out of that. I'm moving in a whole different direction. If they want to follow me, come on. But who better to do those type of videos than Filipinas? They're not going to catch the flag. Imagine if I made a video talking about if Filipinos like to take it from the back. They're doing, they can do that. I can't do that. Imagine if I just paraded a bunch of young, I'm talking about young, tender Filipinas in bikinis. Every video is like that. Do you think I would still be allowed in this country? No, but they can do it. And, you know, and, and let's face it, guys, some of us like that stuff and we'll watch it all day long, but the real good videos you're never going to see anymore. We passed that era. They went viral, but overexposure, man, it's going to hurt this, this place the same as it hurts anything else that overexposed. Remember when Michael Jackson was on that roll in after Thriller? Every record seemed like Michael Jackson was on. Uh, I always feel like somebody's watching me. He was with Paul um, what's the guy, Paul from the Beatles, and to his management said, hey, man, look, you need to step back. All right? You're overexposing yourself. People are going to get tired of seeing you and hearing from you, and he took some time off, and that's all. See, because we're all, foreigners have always been accused of exploiting Filipinas. If we get off the landscape and leave it to nothing but Filipinas, and Filipinos doing this stuff, then you're going to clearly see 
Who's doing the exploiting? It's not us, guys. Okay, so that's what I was talking about. Let's get with this topic. Why don't more men travel for leisure? Okay, I started, I'm going to start it out. The role of women as leaders in the travel industry, as well as the dominance of, we of women as travelers, that's facts. Okay, a lot of the conversations surrounding this passport bros, passport brides, men and women traveling, et cetera, et cetera, is subjective. The low value women, the high value men, modern women, all that's subjective. Let's talk some facts. So what I want to do is I want to throw out some numbers to you because numbers don't lie. They tell a story that opinions overlook most of the time. But we'll start out with this. 64% of travelers worldwide are women. All right. And since America makes up only 4% of the Earth's population, I said, well, maybe it's different in America. No, it, it mirrors that. 63% of women, 37% of men travel for leisure. 80% of all travel decisions are made by women. Okay, and what I'm going to talk about, see, because this passport bro movement has got a lot of potential, but you have to strike while it's hot, guys. Are you simply going to be a hashtag going from here on out, a badge of honor? Are you going to be this big, powerful force that you can be? Because that's what's happening on the other side, guys. They've organized, and man, they're coming out swinging. They're flexing their $15 trillion muscles. And let's just talk about some stuff. But like I said, I'm going to have to. What's up, Michael Alexander? Thank you, brother. He said, I support your idea completely. I appreciate you, man. And I'm going to talk about this, too. But I want to kind of give you some context to show you what's really going on in this travel arena, especially in America, since 70 percent of my viewers are from America. Just to show you that a lot of this stuff is hot air. You know, there's really not a whole lot of people who, traveling, man. You know, I tip my hat to people who make the decision to get a passport and see the earth. The earth belongs to all of us. There's no written law that says, oh, I have to spend my whole entire life where I was born. Okay, so in a study conducted by market researchers, one poll and commissioned by travel luggage provider Victorinox, 11% of Americans have never traveled outside of the state where they were born. Let that marinate in your head, guys. This is what we're dealing with when we, you know, talk about the hate and all of that when somebody gets a passport. 11% of Americans, that's a lot of people who have never left the state. Okay, 13% of the people surveyed have never flown in an airplane. All right? Think about this, man. This is crazy, man. Some of this stuff really shocked me because I did my research on it. I had a, I got a bunch of stuff, but I didn't want to make it passport bro. It, it's just not about knocking passport bros. I'm saying that they can learn a lot from this I call it the passport brides movement. Not to disrespect anybody, but it's just a play on words. It sounds better up against passport bros than what it's really called. It's called the, the new black travel movement. And it's dominated by women. It's fueled by women. And, but we'll get into that. Brandon Bonner said, Cal, that short you had talking about don't give up your money for pussy. That's perfect. Thank you. Yeah, man, you know, one thing that I can say is as men traveling out there, we have to get our stories out there, guys. We have to get our good stories out there because if not, we're going to lose control of the narrative. And that's the worst thing that can happen for this new 
passport bro movement, which, by the way, is nothing new, guys, okay? Black people have been unapologetically promoting international travel since the dawn of the 20th century. And I got that from a book by Tiffany M. Hill. It's a great book. It's called The Earth Belongs to... No, The World Belongs to Us Too. Millennial Women and the New Black Travel Movement. It's a powerful book. I'm going to buy it because I'm interested in this all of a sudden. But let's get back to what I was saying because I want to give you some context. I want to let's go inside what's really going on, okay? Forget all that subjection and all of that opinion and all of that. Let's talk about facts. 13% have never flown a plane. 13% of those polled. Don't own luggage of any kind. Plastic bags don't count, guys, okay? Hey, Sam Champion, thanks for that super sticker. These are some just some crazy numbers, man. And numbers don't lie, guys, okay? They tell a story that opinions overlook. 40% of Americans have never left the country. But that's just this poll. Another poll that was conducted by uh, BikingTheBlueMarble.com, 64% of U.S. citizens have never left the country for any reason. And only 16% have traveled to Mexico or Canada. It's shocking, shocking, man. But this is stuff I talk about all the time. I don't know if you're listening or not. Hey, Will Sutton, he said, good morning, Sir Calvin and Sunshine Show's crew. Now, of the 40% that one poll says they never left the country. 63% of these people said that they couldn't afford international travel. It's, it's beyond their budget, okay? Uh, half of the respondents have never owned a passport. One in 10 Americans surveyed have no interest in going anywhere. And the reason I'm bringing up these numbers, guys, is to tell you what you're going to run up into run into the ignorance see because really the women there's more women traveling than men there's more black women traveling than men the women that you think are hating on you they're not traveling they're not seeing the world they're not going anywhere all right now so if we're going to compare apples to apples and you put the women that are on your level then you have a whole lot more in common man these women are actually encouraging you to get out of your comfort zone and go see some places, guys. But according to the U.S., it's the last one. No, I got a couple of more because I want you to kind of get an idea of how few of us travel over in America. Okay. In an August 29, 2022 article entitled, Why Don't Americans Travel Abroad? Only 30% of American citizens have passports, according to the Office of Travel and Tourism Industries. This is crazy, man. Compared to Canada, 60%. The UK, 75%. A lot of people blame it on the mainstream media over there and the way that they portray foreign countries. But then some people go even further. Some Americans feel that they don't have to leave the country to experience international travel because of the diversity within its own borders. Now, see, this is, man, this is ignorance that we're dealing with, guys, okay? So a lot of you guys, when you hear all this pushback about you getting a passport and all of that, a lot of it's hot air, man. You know, but if you want to get into this manosphere and you know, you want to talk about men being under attack and all of that, then that's a good place to, to be. You know, if you want to talk about that kind of stuff and we're victims and all of that, and because that's a popular genre, man, it, it's very lucrative. That's a fact if you want to get involved with that. But so how do men spend their time then in America? They don't travel. But Men, we spend most of our time, the top of any other genre in America with 
leisure activities like watching television is number one, socializing and exercising. We spend 5.6 hours on average per day, the most of anybody. Travel is way down there because travel is included in leisure. Okay. So, yeah, this is a great point this guy makes. He said, out of those 30%, many still don't leave America. He's absolutely right. Let me give you some stunning, this is just crazy numbers right here. But this was what I was really going to center my argument around with the what the passport bros can learn about the passport bros. 3% of African Americans with passports traveled abroad in 2013, 3%. It doubled to 2004 to six percent in 2014. Then it jumped to 37 percent in 2016, fueled by young black women between the ages of 18 to 35, with, as Tiffany Hill says, a desire to claim to reclaim the dignity and pleasures they are often denied in the United States. See. Women are dominating the travel industry, guys. They're not sitting around hating on us. What they've actually done is created these, they developed, they created and developed these entrepreneurial travel businesses that encourage people to make that international dream, turn it into a reality. I don't see much of that over on the other side. See, because... Remember, they're getting their stories out there. Go on Google, Google it. Google women traveling. You see so many books, so many websites, so many agencies. Okay, you're going to see that. They're telling their stories. They're telling their stories. All right, not the media. We're allowing the media to take control. Stuff like what's happened to Expect Kings and the guy in Brazil. See, they're going to take those two little stories and smear that whole movement because we're not getting our stories out there. Listen, okay, there's a, and, and you may have heard of this, one of these, uh, she considers herself a creator. And this lady is me as a woman, man. I've never had heard about Avita Robinson until last night. She's head of No Madness Travel Tribe. And it's just a community that encourages travel among people of color. She says 85% of my members are female. But here's what caught my attention. And I, I, I got to read this because I want to get it exactly right. This is, uh, she said she wanted to de demystify travel for friends and family who she realized were never coming to visit her. Man, that's me. That's Sunshine Shoulders, man. I'm always, I said, look on one of my videos, man, before I ever heard of this lady. And I think it's the one where I said, America's so toxic. I want my friends and family to come over here so bad that I will pay for it. But then she went even further. That's what I said. I said, we got so much in common. She said she had a desire to build a community because of her loneliness abroad. That's me, man. See, but guess what? Here's the difference between Avita Robinson and Sunshine Shoulders. Is women will back this lady. They backed her. They're not worrying about her bag. They're not worrying about her bag. You guys worry about my bag. Oh, he's living an extravagant lifestyle over there. Listen, guys, I'm as transparent as I possibly can be. I earned a little under 30,000 US dollars last year. I paid a little over $7,600 in taxes, most of it self employment taxes. I'm not going to get rich, guys, but that's what y'all worried about. So you don't want to get behind me. You don't want to get behind my ideas. Okay. You rather sit over there and complain. All right. And that's the big difference. The women have organized, man. They're flexing their muscles. Let me give you an example of that. And this is why, this is my message to men and to the Passport Bro movement. In 2015, uh, I hope I pronounced this airline right, 
eat eat that airlines had a fire glitch okay and they were offering tickets to Ab Abu Dhabi Johannesburg for two hundred and fifty dollars round trip okay these women travel groups nomad uh no Madness Travel Tribe and the other big one it's called Travel Nor. They bought up so many tickets because they put the word out. They put a hashtag out there. Book that ish. And so many women bought tickets, man, that not only did the airline take notice, but Airbnb took notice, start offering these uh, groups discount codes so that they could go in partnership with them. See, that's what we as men need to do instead of just frivolously traveling around the globe, beating our chest by ourselves. We need to organize and come together, man, and get some of that love, some of that money that's out there. But we won't do that. It's nothing wrong with getting out here and traveling, but make it work for you, okay? These women have developed entrepreneurial travel business infrastructures that encourage women to turn their international travel dreams into reality. This is what I'm doing. This is what I'm telling people. Get on a plane, come over here to the Philippines. Okay, I got a guest house over there. I'm trying to get people to buy into the idea, man, that it's okay to travel. The earth belongs to all of us. But if all we're going to do is sit around and complain, man, you know, about men under attack, guess what? We get zero sympathy from the media over there. Unless we start telling our stories and get them on our side, you can forget about any sympathy. You can say what you want about the Me Too movement. You can say what you want about the Black Lives Matter movement. They blew up because they had stories, guys. We don't have any stories. The stories that are out there, they're negative. We need more positive stories, guys. So, yeah, we spend most of our time in front of the TV, uh, you know, other than sleeping and uh, eat, I mean, sleeping and working. But, yeah, I encourage men to get out and see the planet, no matter where you go, because these numbers are crazy, man. We don't go nowhere. We're so narrow-minded over there, and that's one of the problems. But yeah, you guys, the women, see, I grew up in a family. I had three sisters, right? They would wear each other's clothes and wouldn't have no problem with it. If I wore a pair of my brother's socks, it was going to be a fight. And that's how it is with men. We think differently. They're going to support each other, man, you know. Passport brides are this new black travel movement. They've got a damn PhD in travel where we're on training wheels because we're not going to come together. We're just going to sit over there and talk about how we're victims and men are under attack and feminists and all that. When these organizations are not run by feminists, guys, we got to get up off our behinds and start seeing more of the world. See? Because believe it or not, we're traveling internationally for the same reasons they are. This woman was powerful, man. She said, a lot of us travel to escape the trauma of being black in America. Okay, now, couldn't a black man transfer that over to the reason why he's leaving? It doesn't mean it's true, but that's just what she said. Listen to this and tell me that you couldn't put this under your bio and why you're coming overseas. The desire to claim the dignity and pleasures, they are often denied in the United States. Now, a woman wrote that. Who gives a damn who wrote it? Okay? The fact of it is, it's eloquent, and it's the truth. All right? But, yeah, so few of us travel, man, and I'm just trying to figure out why. I couldn't find an answer on YouTube, so I'm going to need you, I mean, on Google. So I need y'all to help me. Why don't we travel more? Why don't me and travel more? I, I, I don't get it. 
Because the three main reasons people travel is leisure, visiting friends and relatives, or business. Okay? But I'm just trying to figure out, when I saw these numbers, man, it just kind of, it kind of crushed me, man. So, you know, that's enough for me. Let me take some of you guys' questions because I want to see where y'all stand on this issue. These women are not, not the real women. The real women are traveling themselves. They're not sitting around <laughs> waiting on you and talking about you. Okay, a lady from Chicago, black lady, she said, when I walk in the clubs and the night scene in Chicago, which everybody knows is bustling in Chicago, she said, you can hear crickets. She said, nobody pays me any attention. She said, but when I fly over to Italy and I walk into a room, all eyes on me. See, it's the same thing with me over here in the Philippines. Guys, they're traveling for the same reason we are. They just been doing it longer than us. They're just, you know, they're, they're like this where we're like this. We're like this. The women movement is like this. They're, they're making no excuses. Okay, they're taking no prisoners. She's moved in with her Italian boyfriend now. But those are stories all on the internet, guys. They're not afraid to say that. We get over here, we're hiding over here. You won't even let me interview you. Them women over there unapologetically looking for dick over there, looking for relationships, looking for romance, but you over here pretending that you over here on some damn scuba diving trip, knowing good and well what you look, uh, knowing what you're looking for. And see, this is the opposite of what I'm saying, not when it comes to traveling internationally, because women get a pass. See, when they come over there, they'll say it out of their own mouths. We're looking for better options over there. They're saying that we're not enough, just like we're saying they're not enough. They're saying, oh, they're not enough. I'm going somewhere else. We bash them, but they get a pass. The sex pet label is not let you say you're coming to Thailand or the Vietnam or Philippines, immediately you're a sex pack. Maybe that has something to do with it. I hope not. Uh, Richard's method said, do you remember the Million Man March? My concern, Calvin, is that any black men groups will be targeted. They will say it's about anything else and then dismantle it and rebrand it as negative. A absolutely. That's what I'm saying. But we need to, number one, stop pretending, get our stories out there. What is it? Okay, here's what I said we can learn from the women's movement. I, I mean, I had so much stuff, man. I was going to go to town, man. Number one is, what's a clear vision of what, a, what it means to be a passport, bro? You know, it has to be more than a badge of honor and a hashtag if we're really going to live up that it has. It's not new. You know, we've been, black people have been championing international travel since the dawn of the, the 20th century, but first of all, what's the clear vision? We need to put that out there, first of all, and then the men need to buy into it and quit worrying about who's running it, who's earning the money, and this and that, guys. That's what holds us back. You worry about my back, man. I be struggling over here most of the time. But y'all got these guys on here, these trolls, and not only trolls, they got y'all thinking I'm living some extravagant lifestyle. You go on, look, man, somebody sent me uh, a link. They said, hey, Sunshine Show, they mentioned your name on this live stream. They said, hey, why don't you have Sunshine Shows on there? So, so I clicked on the link and listened to the live stream. And this guy, man, he has half the, he has half the subscribers I've got. But man, does he have the following, you know, if somebody puts five dollars up there on my uh, super chat, I catch hell for it. This guy was not only did he have he made he earned more in that one because I sit there and watched it because it was interesting. Even though I'm not into the man of money in one live stream, then I do the whole month. But I and and he's asking for money. See. 
But we've got behind him because we like that man of spirit movement. It's popular now. And it's very, very lucrative. But let's get a clear vision. Number two, we got to get organized, man. That should be the second lesson. We got to go from this loosely knit group of men to a force to be reckoned with. Okay, every day I get messages from guys. Hey, I'm coming to the Philippines. What if we had some kind of way to find out? Hey, you know, because at any given time, maybe 20 of y'all are coming over here at the same time. If we could somehow pull that together and contact the airline and say, you know, and maybe we can get a discount. Same with the hotels. But if you're going to try to do it by yourself, here you are right here. The women are like this. They're getting discount codes. They're getting offers to go in partnerships with these big companies, man. And this is what is possible for this passport bro movement. But we're going to let them dismantle it before it gets started. They've taken two negative stories and splashed the whole headlines with it because we won't get our stories out there. You know, we won't get our stories out there. Only we can tell our story. A Filipina can't tell our story, but that's what we're trying to do. I'm sorry, guys, she can't do it. But these are people we're getting behind. I'm just letting you know, man, you know, this is this is big right here. This passport bro movement and just me and traveling, period. It's a hot topic right now. It's one that we need to try to put our heads together and find out how we can really make it work instead of just out here beating our chest. Oh, yeah, I went to Brazil. Oh, I went to the DR accomplishing nothing but maybe yeah you went up there and got relaxed and everything like that let's look at the bigger picture that's what i'm talking about see you know the third thing we can learn from these women is develop an entrepreneurial infrastructure that turns the dream of traveling abroad into reality women have gotten behind these female entrepreneurs and bought into their ideas Women such as Avita Robinson had a clear set of ideas about seeing the world. And the women got behind her. They wasn't saying, well, how much money the Sunshine Shoulders make? You know, and all of that. Man, my blood, sweat, and tears paid for this house. And you can do the same thing. I'm trying to be an example. But hell, y'all trying to cut me in half at the knees, man, before I can even get started. Thomas Phillips, what's going on, Cal? He said, you're the main reason I had the courage to go see my lady in the Philippines. I had the desire to come see her, but you gave me the courage to do it. Thanks, man. You're welcome. And that's what I'm saying. See? Quit worrying about somebody's damn bag. I'm not going to get rich doing this, guys. But I am going to get rich, but it won't be doing this. I'm doing this. From my heart, man. I'm, I know where you are because I was there. But there's only three things you can do. You can organize over there and get behind a politician and maybe he's going to bring about some legislation changes. You can sit around in these manosphere's and complain, bitch and moan on each other's shoulders about how we're victims and Men are under attack and all that. Or you can do something about it. And that's where I am. That's what I'm saying. Do something about it. Get the fuck out of there, if nothing else. Start saving your money. See what else is out here. And it don't matter why you're coming. See, that's another thing they try to trip us up with. Are you just going over there for women? It don't matter why you come. Women ain't apologizing. Hey, Daryl says, I will. Uh, IC411 says, if you plan something, a date and time, I'm always available for December next year. I'm already in Thailand now. Yeah, well, I do meet and greets every so often. I'm going to have one February 25th. And that's what this is. It's not to meet me. It's to meet each other. When I read this lady's story, I said, man, that's me. I never even knew who she was. But she's the CEO of a multi-million dollar travel tribe. No madness travel tribe. 
And it's another sister that it's, 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 her thing is even bigger. It's called Travel Noor. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, man. They got a lot of power. They're flexing their muscles, man, and they're getting their members discounts to Airbnbs, hotels, flights. All we're doing is saying, oh, I'm getting a passport and I'm leaving out of the country. It's just a badge of honor for us when it should be something much bigger. See, that's really what I was going to talk about, but, but we take this stuff personally. If you say passport bros, they come at you like, man, don't pick on, we're not picking on you. We're trying to help move this thing along. To, to help it help it reach its potential. It's like a little baby right now. You're not going to leave a little baby to its own devices. I'm not going to leave Booby to her own devices every now and then. I got to get tough with Booby. I got to steer her in the right direction. It's the same over here. You know. Hey, Kool-Aid Coach, she said, preach, brother. Well, you know, I, I, I hate to do that, man. You know, but a lot of what uh, of what I'm talking about is facts. That's why I put all these facts out here because most of the conversation surrounding this passport bros and passport broads and this new black travel movement and all that, it's subjective. It's opinions. You know, you can argue all day long, and that's what we like to do. But when the facts are right there in your face, this new black travel movement is being fueled by black women. These same black women that we claim that hate us. These aren't the women that are hating us. They're out of the country. They're leaving for the same way the reasons are you are. But we like to argue. So we'll sit there and waste all of that time Okay, arguing about how we're under attack instead of just spending a hundred and what what is a hundred thirty five dollars now for a passport or something like that, and just to see what what's going on out here in the world. Hey, Jeffrey Chowder, thanks for that uh, super chat. He says. You're on to something, Calvin. You did your homework and brought it to the light. Hope other vloggers take notes, too. Thank you, brother. You know, this movement, man, has a lot of potential, man, but we got to get started, man. Glenn Hartwick, he says, I don't understand why people hate on me for coming to the Philippines to live with my Filipino girlfriend. Not all of them are whores or, or scammers because they're not doing it. Let me go, for anybody new, let me go through some of this stuff. Here's what you're running into, Glenn. The same thing I did. Remember, I was way ahead of this, guys. I'm not some genius. I'm just telling you what I'm seeing, what I'm living, what I'm experiencing. I did a video that says, when you come to the Philippines, you will be attacked. Long before anybody ever heard of Passport Bros. And it's a fact. OK, but listen to this. One in 10 Americans surveyed have no interest in going anywhere. These are the people who are giving you trouble. Ugly. Uh, OK, 11 percent of Americans have never left the state in which they were born. Man, and we're supposed to be the cradle of civilization when only 30 percent of our citizens have a passport. Because they've got us believing in this rhetoric. Oh, you don't have to go anywhere because America's so diversified that you can get that international flavor here. Bullshit. You can't see the tall volcano in Chicago. I'm sorry. They got the magnificent mile, but they don't got that tall volcano. Okay. Or Copacabana Beach, uh, uh, okay, a Sugarloaf Mountain, and all that stuff, a Pompeii. The ruins in Rome and all that. See, that's a bunch of foolishness and we're buying into it, Glenn. And that's why people like you and anybody who wants to get out and see the 197 million square miles as much of as they want to. You, you know, some people, it's, it's the people close around you, not strangers. They're going to attack you. 
64% of U.S. citizens have never left the country. But yet, they'll give you their opinion on the Philippines, Thailand, and everywhere else. I'm telling you to get out that damn I don't give a damn button. And I'm being nice. I could have said I don't give a F button. And start pressing that thing, start using it, and get the hell out of here. And TJ Johnson said, yeah, way, way before any of these five-star general nonsense, I was a regular dude with a regular job scraping and saving to get out of the States and literally anywhere else with a beach, cheap rooms and dollar beers. Absolutely, man. And that's what I'm talking about. You have to have a desire, though. We spend most of our time as men watching television. I didn't say that. I'm going to put all of these links in my description when this is over with. This is facts, guys. we got to get away from this. all of this being subjective and arguing back and forth. Numbers are going to tell a story that opinions overlook, guys. Okay? Men spend 5.6 hours per day in leisure activities and out of that 5.6 three hours of it is spent watching television the number one thing that we do then is socializing then it's exercising then on down the list travels way way down there hey michael alexander thanks for the super chat he said if not for this channel i would not be coming to the ph see that's that's what i'm trying to do thank you brother this is what I'm trying. I'm just trying to encourage people. This might not be the place for you. You know, fly to the DR. Fly somebody somewhere close. Play a Del Carmen, Mexico. Just anywhere to get out of where you are now. If you feel that the situation where you are now is not living up to your standard or what it is that you want for the rest of your life, then go somewhere else. That's all you have to do. Just go somewhere else. It's very inexpensive for real. It costs less than one of these damn PlayStation 5s you grown-ass men be buying. And I'm not putting nobody down. I'm just saying, you know, when you put it in contrast to where we're spending our other money, why not get out there and see the world, see what's out here? Because what you're looking for, the woman, the job, the opportunity, the business, is probably out here somewhere. It's probably not on that little dot you've been living your entire life on. A very, very tiny dot, by the way. I'm from Louisville, Kentucky, 334 square miles. Most of my life, I lived there. Never even thought of leaving. That's why when I see these numbers, yeah, they're shocking, but it's reality. You know, I'm chasing the damn American dream that, that turned into a nightmare for me. One day, I picked up a book, Think and Grow Rich, A Black Choice by Dennis Kimbrough, and it changed my life. I start thinking outside of the realms of my old life, and they say once your mind expands, it's never going to go back to the same size it was before. So I said, the hell with this, man. I start selling insurance, man, and Next thing you know, man, I was kicked back on beaches, man, flying on planes, doing all kind of stuff. And I just never had a desire to return back to that old life again, you know. But we buy into this rhetoric. He said, hey, Cal, back off the PlayStation. I'm just, you know, making a point, guys. You know, 13% of Americans own no travel luggage at all. So who's... So why are you worrying about these type of people? And plastic bags don't count, by the way. That's not considered travel luggage, guys. Okay? But we're worrying about them. And then remember, we can make up stories. We can make up stories because we love to argue. We like to sit back and be the victim and say, oh, we're being under attack. Well, if you're under attack, why are you just sitting there getting beat over the head? You're not going to get any sympathy from the media. Y'all can and just because y'all talking loud don't mean y'all correct. Don't mean you're right. Okay? And that's what they do on these live streams is oh, they screaming and hollering, yeah, me and all that, that, these feminists and blah, blah, blah. And nothing's getting done. Nothing's getting changed. Meanwhile, I'm over here living a life I never even knew existed. 
living a life I never knew existed. And I try to share it with y'all. And then what do they do? They turn around like a boomerang, man, and try to cut me to straight. Brothers, by the way, there's brothers watching this damn live stream right now who formed a private chat group with the sole purpose of shutting Sunshine Shoulders down and discrediting me. This is the reason why this passport bro movement will never reach its full potential. Meanwhile, these women are over here building entrepreneurial travel business infrastructure. They're taking these young girls and say, hey, look, look what's out here. And I and I take my hat, tip my hat to men out there who get in their young son's passports and stuff. It's not a joke. The sooner they get the passport and see what's out here, the better. But we want to file, we want to go into this, we, we want to ban to all this rhetoric. Hey, Will Sutton, thank you, brother, for the super chat. He said, same here, Cal. I probably wouldn't have retired when I did and come here if it wasn't for you. And I'm thankful for that, man, because that's all I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to get you guys to exercise your options. We got options, man. A whole lot more than what we think. We do, man. We got a whole lot more options than watching television, standing on the corner socializing, and in the gym exercising. Nothing wrong with that, but we got a whole lot more we can do, man. You're probably not going to reach your potential. A lot of you guys, you know, you're Christian guys. You say you believe in God. Then why would you stay stuck in one little bitty tiny spot your whole entire life? When you said that God created the earth, but you afraid to travel the earth. Okay, it says it in the Bible. My father was a preacher. I know the Bible. Don't think I don't know the Bible. But you guys, man, you coward. You're scared, man. You're scared to do something different. So I'm trying to get you to do something different. I'm saying, hey, look at what these women are doing. I don't have a problem with women, see? And any man in his right mind doesn't have a problem with women. Okay, if you want to be a modern woman and all that, okay, I'm not going to... I'm not even going to pay you any attention. I'm not even going to buy into that argument because there's good women out there. If I had to go back and live in the United States and could never leave again, I would find a good woman over there because I know the difference now. But yeah. Um, what's up, Mike? He says, hey, Cal, preach on, brother. Everything you're saying are facts. I like that great show, brother. Keep up the good work. Glenn Hartwick says, yeah, I'm from Missouri and I'm retired Army. Thank you, brother. Now, that's discipline right there. And that's another thing I'm proud of. A lot of my viewers are military, former military or retired military. Man, that ain't nothing. That's not a walk in the park. We've been traveling for a long time. We've seen what's out here, really. Most of us have. But no matter what we do, we've done everything people asked us to do, it's still not enough, man. But I'm not going to sit over there and complain about it. He says, I'm from Missouri, and I'm a child army, and I'm coming to the Philippines because my fourth quarter started, and my give a damn button has been busted for years. I'm coming for a better life. Come on, man. That's what I'm saying. Come on. Because I'm fired up, man, today. You know, they done got me fired up. You know, the hell with all these old false narratives. Let's get our stories out there. They come here, man. They don't even want to take a picture with me. I'm like, well, y'all getting ready to destroy the passport bro movement before it ever get started. These women are getting their stories out, man. They're writing books, travel logs, blogs, blogs, and a whole kind of stuff. The good, the bad, the ugly, the romance, everything, man. They got in front of that. We're going to let the damn media destroy us before it ever get started. They done took that expat kings and the, what happened to this guy in Brazil and all this. They're telling our stories for us, man. And this is the problem all along. Okay? This is the reason why I'm an ambassador, guys. For Americans, for men around the world when I'm over here. I'm on my best behavior. I want them to see the other side. See, and most of the people who come over here are like that. That's very important. 
you know, as a black man, man, you know, it's a lot of uh, anti-black feelings around the world. People who've never seen black people before, they just going by what they hear on the TV. Somebody else is controlling our narrative. So now when we get the opportunity to control our narrative, we want to shy away from it. I'll be damned. I'm out here in the front and center. Now, everything that I do is orchestrated to put a good face on black men and men in general around the world. Hell with that. Hey, Kevin Kelly he said, great idea. How do we link up and capitalize on these travel discount benefits? Well, see, we got to put our heads together. Maybe a Facebook group, if somebody hasn't already made one, where we can get in there and say, hey, man, who's going to Brazil on XX amount of month and day and whatever? And you get 20, 25 men together, maybe you can, somebody in that group is going to know what to do. But to do nothing, we're doing nothing. We're just flying around the world frivolously, beating our chests and, and you know, waving our passports. And it's, does, it's not doing anybody really any good but you. It's time that we go from this to this. The women are flexing their muscles, guys. And that's who we need to learn from. Women are not my enemy, man. You know, women are not my enemy. I'm sorry. If y'all want to spend y'all time over there talking about that stuff, man, your mother's a woman. Get out of here with that stuff. Yeah, uh, Geechee Lion says, why are these ninjas coming around you and don't want to be seen? If it was me, you couldn't stay in my place and treat me like persona non grata. I don't know what it is, man. But, you know, women, they will wear each other's clothes. I've got daughters, man. They're friends. They come over and change the clothes. Man, if I put on a pair of my brother's socks, we're fighting. That's just how me and I, I guess it's territorial. I don't know. But I tell you what, it's not working. It's not working, man. We need to try something different because it's not working, guys. Uh, Brandon. Bonner says, yeah, but cow, those old crazy girls we love hacking track. Well, what did you do to make them track you? And why do you give a damn? Do you got to give a damn button? Use it. Oh, yeah, you care about. Why would you care about somebody who's never left their own state before? Who doesn't even own a travel bag? Who has no dreams, no desires to go anywhere? There's like 50 million Americans over there. Everybody knows somebody like that. So why are you worried about that and what they say and what they're going to do? They don't track you anyway. You got a damn social security number. You got a driver's license. You probably got a credit card or debit card. Man, you ain't hiding from nobody, man. You, you ain't clear broad daylight, man. Everybody can see you. Hey, Seth Travel Vlogs, what's going on? Uh, Tim West says, amazing ideas, Brother Cal, will make it easier and more comfortable to travel as well if we come together. Absolutely, but man, will we come together like the women? Can I wear your shirt, brother? Uh, you know, I got a, I've got a date tonight, and I don't have a shirt. Can I wear your shirt? No. You know, go wash that shirt you got on, or whatever it is. That's how we act. But the woman say, that hurt. You need shoes? You need a hat? You need a ride? They've gotten behind these travel organizations, man, and these and they got power now. They're being courted by these big corporations, man, for doing something that we're doing. But we have no organization. I have no organization. I don't have a problem with women, okay? I'm telling you that now, guys. I I don't get that. I'm not with that man of first stuff, and I'm not knocking anybody for it. There has to be some truth behind what they're saying. I don't know how much, but it has to be some truth. Or it wouldn't be so many people following and um, contributing to that arena, man. These guys are becoming man, just semi-gods, man. Look at the guy Andrew Tate and what he's talking about. A woman had him. He came out of a woman. He didn't come out of no man. You know, meanwhile, these guys, they can't even live up to the shit that they're telling you guys to. 
I'm just trying to give you just a common sense approach. I'm not saying don't let anybody uh, push uh, push you around or anything like that. But if somebody's picking on me, if I'm under attack, I'm not just going to sit there and take it. And it seems like that's what we're doing. Hey, TJ Johnson says, we're deleted my whole thing. Hey, your travel vlogs, still enjoying your honeymoon? <laughs> yeah, I forgot. Congratulations, she did get married. Jay Smooth 99 says, you're right, Cal. I told a co-worker I was going to Thailand or the Philippines. And she said those companies, countries just sex traffic women. She at home with two cats and no man, you know, hating on me. Yeah, see, it's co-workers, your friends and associates, and your family. That's all it is. There's no strange women out here. This low value, high value stuff is subjective. Modern women, modern men, you know, see, they're saying the same thing about us that we're saying about them, but we bash them, okay? When a woman says, oh, because you guys are low value, I don't, there's not enough men on my level, so I'm going overseas. Why should we get mad at her for saying that? We need to step up our game. But see, I don't want them anyway. I don't care how much money they earn. I don't give a, you know, of that. I just want something different. If there's 7 billion people on the planet approaching 8 billion, then 4 billion of them are women. So why am I got to settle for the 200 million, 150 million that's in America? A small, tiny fraction of the woman selection out here. I should be able to travel anywhere on the earth until I can find somebody that's suitable for me and I'm suitable for them and we're compatible. I'm tired of dating other men's ex-wives and ex-girlfriends and all of that. I want something new. What I don't know won't hurt me. See, even though I come over here and I'm married, you know, I'm basically married to Marilyn, I don't know anything about her past. But hell, the women I'm dating over there, hell, I know they ex-boyfriend or they damn ex-husband. You get tired of that stuff, man. So yeah, get out here and see what's available for you. Larry Lindsay says, I'm like this. If you haven't done it, I'm not going to ask you about it. I understand that a lot of people in the USA gave up on having a good life. Well, because we're banning all that rhetoric over there, Larry, that you're unpatriotic. If you want to travel outside of America, I live outside of America. That's foolishness. When the majority of people over there, their parents and grandparents, migrated to America. But we'll fall for it. Like they said, it says the reason why so few Americans leave the country is because they feel that they don't have to leave the country to experience international travel because of the diversity within its own borders. See, that's ignorance right there. That, what else can you call that? But just because somebody else thinks that way don't mean you have to think that way. Hey, uh, Mike Dawsonville, he said, best show you ever had, brother. Educate them. I put that on the Hall of Fame of all your shows. Everybody thumbs up, please. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, man, you know, let, let's get real about it. Women aren't my problem. Matter of fact, I've learned more from women. Women raise me. I'm not some simp. I just know a little bit more about women having women raise me. You know, there's nothing left. You know, as far as I, I, there was nothing left out. I had big brothers. I've got a brother that's nine years older than me. You know, I had that role models growing up, but I'm just saying, women don't have any, I don't have any problem with women, guys. We got to get in, we got to spend more of our time doing more productive things than worrying about what Big Susie and all of them uh, are talking about over there. Because remember, we don't want them anyway. So why are you worrying about what they talking about? We don't want them. T.J. Johnson says, I definitely got recommendations for you if you end up in Osaka or the Odaba or Odaba part of Tokyo. And this is what we need to do. Start putting our heads together and saying, hey, 
I'm coming to the Philippines in March. And then next thing you know, 15 other guys are probably going to be coming to the Philippines in March. But three-fourths of them are going to be sneaking in here. So it's not going to do the group any good. We need men who are going to stand up, man, walk with their head held high and say, look, I'm traveling wherever the hell I want to travel to. The earth belongs to me. If I want to go over there for a wife, okay. If I want to go over there for relaxation, okay. Whose business is it? It's not mine. I mean, it's not yours. It's mine. If I want to go over there to try to start a business, who, by the way, I can't get financing over here, but maybe with the cash I've saved up, it's enough to get that business started somewhere else. Why not? But I'm not going to sit around and keep on complaining. We got to do something about it, guys. Let's get back to here and see what we can learn from women, man. You know, this Avita Robinson, I'd never heard of her before. And she's a woman after my own heart, man. Just to like. She said she got, she said she was traveling around and got lonely and bored being by herself. That's me, guys. And she said, I'm going to start up a community. I'm going to start up a community so people can travel around. We can travel around together. And I'm, by the way, I'm going to educate my friends and family on traveling overseas. Because these people, I come to the realization they're never going to visit me. My brother on Facebook, you go on there now if you're a friend of mine. My daughter's getting ready to graduate from, she's a dental assistant. And I said, you know, I said, hey, man, you didn't even set my friend request. He said, come home then. You know, I'm saying, he's mad at me. I'm like, well, come here, man. The plane flies both ways. Why do you want me to come there? Come here and visit me. It's a big deal. Then I don't even think about leaving America. Will Sutton's a cow. I wish I could catch the next meet and greet, but I'll be back in the States for a little while before coming back. Yeah, I know you over here having the time of your life, brother. Let's see. Uh, and Yusuf Amal Habib says that Enzo Pastore, Calvin doesn't necessarily show the comments in order. Don't worry. He loves to skip man. <laughs> yeah, I find him, man. It's hard for me to keep up with him. Um, Tim West says, I definitely want to visit the Philippines and Thailand. Yeah, and, and a lot. And a lot of places. There's no written document that says you have to spend your whole entire life in the place you were born. Look at these figures. This is America that we're so proud of. It's supposed to be the cradle of civilization. 13% of Americans have never been on an airplane before. But these are the ones that talk about you going somewhere. 13% of Americans have never been on an airplane before. That's crazy, man. I, you know, see, this is what we don't discuss. So who's in the conversation with you when you're talking about traveling and they're talking about and they're giving you pushback? Probably these people here. See, eleven percent of Americans have never traveled outside of the state where they were born. I can't. I, I can hardly believe that, man. It's in in twenty twenty three. It's just so hard for me to believe, man. Hey, hybrid seven eleven. Thanks for the super chat. He said, "Peace, Cal." I tried using PayPal, but the system wouldn't complete the transaction. Well, thanks for your consideration, brother. You know, I really appreciate your support. You are old head too, you know, but I've got people actually sitting around counting up the super chats I get. How sick is that? This is why we ain't gonna never amount to nothing. I told you I earned a little bit oh, under 30,000 US dollars last year. Okay? There's nothing for me to beat my chest at. And by the way, I refunded a little bit over 7,600 of that for taxes. So it left me with about 22,000. Okay, so all this old 
Oh, uh, he's living a traveling lifestyle over there stuff, man. Trying to cut me in half at the knees and all that, discredit me and all that. Why, man? What good is that going to do you guys? Y'all watching now. You know, y'all watching now, man. It just pisses me off, man. But meanwhile, let me start up a man of spirit channel. That's what I really need to do. If I was really wanting to get rich, that's what I would do. I would start up one of those channels and start beating women up. You know, but I wouldn't, my heart wouldn't be in it. But that's where the money is. Y'all go on there. I didn't see not one person on there bashing these guys. He said, damn cow, okay, start to mean like, hey, hey, no. Yeah, uh, uh, now this is what I'm talking about. He said, exactly, the world is yours. Might as well travel. What are you working for? Most of us, our children are grown. Now it's our grandchildren. But you got to take some time for you. See something, man. I'm going to tell you what really got me. Okay. When we traveled, the first place I ever went overseas when I was in the Navy, we went to Portsmouth, England. And it was like somebody flipped a switch. And I was like, my man, somewhere in my subconscious man, I always knew there's a better place for me. Because when I went over there in 1983, it was just so much different than what I was leaving from. I mean, it's like, I don't know what it's like now. I'm telling you in, in 19, I wasn't looked at. I was, you know, I was, the people looked at me different. I was treated better. But then the second place is what really turned me around for good. And I was never really going to be the same again. We went to Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Sugarloaf Mountain, Copacabana Beach, just the carefree lifestyle that was going on over there. All those beautiful black people over there. You know, I'm not talking about politics and stuff like that, man. You know, that's, you know we, we can leave that where, where it lies, man. I'm talking about once your mind expands, it's never going to go back to the same size it was before. So once you come to the Philippines or somewhere else, I don't care what the experience is going to be like. When you get, go back home, you're never going to be the same. You're always going to be hungry to go somewhere else. And I was fortunate enough to go to a lot of places. The Bachelor of Science says anyone here in Thailand at the moment, that you know, you could come here to Thailand or Philippines and, and just visit all of Asia and Southeast Asia. No place is over four hours away. Then you could go to India, what's that, six hours away? But most of those places, Indonesia, um, Vietnam, Cambodia, Thailand, they, they're so close, China, South Korea, Japan. It's all right here. You can see a big bunch of earth right in this one little general area. But you got to get out in front of the damn TV and off the corner. Hey, Dr. Silver says, Sunshine, I've stayed in San Carlos and I love the city and people. Why don't more Conos move there? Well, because they never heard of St. Carlos City until now. I never heard of it. But I'm going to tell you the truth, though, Dr. Silva. When you come here to live, you have to be really retired. You have to be retired, retired. Because it's not a whole lot of nightlife here. You know, it's, it's a retirement community. Now, if you still got a little bit in you, then you can go to Bacala City, Cebu. Dumaguete, Elo Elo City. But San Carlos City, it's too slow for a lot of people. And that's why they don't come, not to live. They'll come here to stay for a little while. But they still got a, some ants in their pants. Uh, Alexander Nevermind said, yeah, 244 in the chat. Please, guys, hit the thumbs up. You know there's no other channel like this. Support this brother. Yeah, thank you, brother. I appreciate that. Alpino, I said, first time I ventured out to Thailand, uh, Bangkok, Pattaya blew my mind. Yeah. It's something, man, that you have to see. You, you won't 
appreciated watching it on the video. That that's the videos are good. They make they build up your appetite. But eventually you gotta come home for supper. You gotta come home for supper, guys. And that's what happens when you get boots on the ground. You was like, man, these guys didn't do the Philippines no justice. Or Thailand or wherever you are. He said, hey, just go hate. Him. <laughs> yeah, guys, I hadn't today was the one year anniversary of the passing of Moonshine Shoulders, guys. Uh I haven't got that tape finished yet because I'm I'm working on it on my laptop. But I'm gonna get it um uh, before before the next few days. But yeah, John passed away exactly one year ago today, man. And he's been missed, man. Sam Safari said, if you're creating content, then you should get paid. Yeah, see, the problem, though, is for some reason, I've never seen the attacks. I've never seen any other vloggers, foreign vloggers, come under attack like the ones in the Philippines, and I don't understand it. I can't grasp it. If I was doing this anywhere else, nobody would bother me. I mean, these guys be on their, they on their game. I have to tell you, man, they're asking for, they say, well, I need 25 brothers to stand up and do this, do this, that, for the calls. They say, you know, boo, 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 boo. If I did that, man, people would have a damn heart attack. You know, but you're right. I mean, who are the e-biggers? You want something for nothing? You know, you want good entertainment, good facts, good information for nothing. I'm so, I'm so YouTube's the only one supposed to get paid. But we're the only ones that come under scrutiny. And I don't believe and I don't understand it. Then they're like on a loop. You know, they think if they tell a lie long enough, it becomes the truth. No, it becomes an old lie. That's all. You know, talking about the, oh, you need to pay taxes. I don't work in the Philippines. I work remotely from the Philippines. I pay taxes to my country, the United States, okay? If the BRR came out to me and said, hey, Mr. Rose, you owe us X amount, I wouldn't have a problem paying them to stay here, okay? But they think that, you know, who else goes through that but Philipp foreign Filipino vloggers? Nobody. It's crazy. But, yeah, let's talk about traveling. If you've never been anywhere, how many people on this live stream have their passport and at least one stamp? But now let's just start with the passport. Put a one if you've got your passport. Okay, David Qual says Augusta, Georgia here will be there in June. Travel Go says I just visited my 42nd. TJ says, I used to just F and disappear from the U.S. And the only person that knew was who? <laughs> was a Golda and maybe my manager. Yeah. And that's, who, that's only whose business it was, brother. What's up, Jay Smooth? Appreciate it. Thanks for that super chat. He said, good show, Cal. Yeah, we're trying to encourage people to get out, man. And and see the world. What's up, Yardy? Yeah, TJ, the one. Bunch of ones, guys. You know, that's what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about then. You know, when you're talking about getting outside of that box that you've been in for so long and you come somewhere else, nobody knows you. You don't know nobody else. You got enough money. You know when you wake up in the morning, you got enough money to do whatever you want to do. If you're over here for a woman, you got the beautiful woman next to you. Are you sitting back on the beautiful beach like over in Sikihoa Island? Yeah, for $16 a night, I'm right on the damn beach. You owe that to yourself, guys, to see something like that, at least. The, the, the Great Wall of China, something, something, man. When I went to Thailand, me and Eric Terry, and he'll tell you, we had a driver over there, and the driver took us to, I guess it would be downtown Bangkok, wherever it was where all the palace is and all that stuff, man. You got to see that one time 
before you die. That's the kind of stuff that will never leave your mind. It's permanently embedded in my head. The extravagance, guys, is unbelievable. You got to see that stuff. The tall volcano over here up by uh, between Batangas and uh, the Gaitai, where you got this big ass uh, volcano just look like somebody just took it and set it right in the middle of this lake. You got to see stuff like that, man. And if you're from overseas, you got to go to Chicago and see the Magnificent Mile. Go to New York. Go to L.A., see? Man, yeah, we got a bunch of ones, man. And that's what I'm saying. So y'all know what I'm talking about. Big Daddy said, when will weed be legal? Man, I, that's something I don't even worry about, man. I don't smoke weed. It don't have to ever be legal. I doubt if it ever be legal over here. Don't bring that stuff. Global violent vagabonds. I run out of pages three times. Yeah. Lonnie Franklin. Good morning, Cal. Checking in from Houston, Texas. Ready for the nitty gritty. I want to give a shout out and congratulations to Roger and Is Ismi. They got married yesterday. I wasn't able to make the wedding. I think it was yesterday. No, it was the 20th, Friday. You know, and they, they had been live-ins for a long time. You know, it's funny you talk about Mexico. 16% of U.S. population has been to Mexico, and that's because prior to 2007, they didn't need a passport. I mean, yeah, passport. So a lot of them was going in there, but I, so I, I, I'm looking at these figures because when I wrote them down last night, I said, these guys aren't going to believe me. They're not going to believe that 13% of those surveyed don't own any luggage at all. Not, not those damn plastic bags. 64% of Americans have never left the country. Is this real? Is this true? Half of the respondents have never owned a passport? Wow. One in 10 Americans surveyed have no interest in going anywhere. So you can go down the street and count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I ain't going nowhere. I'm just going to stay right here. You know, it's crazy, man. 30%. We're last as far as industrialized nations, as far as our citizens owning passports. 30% compared to Canada, 60%, the UK, 75%. But we're supposed to be the cradle of civilization. We're supposed to be leading the world in everything. Okay. John Gomez says, yeah, all of us can charter a plane. But see, that's the type of stuff that when you really thinking on all 12 cylinders, John. All we have to do is say, hey, what might, you know, we, I could make a chart and say, hey, anybody that's coming to the Philippines, put what month you're coming. And if enough people are coming within your month, y'all could kind of fellowship and kind of see what you can go up, I mean, come up with. You know, a closed mouth won't get fed. Let the airline tell you no. Let them turn you down. Don't turn yourself down. That's what my my first insurance agent used to tell me. He said, don't be afraid to ask for the, for the money. You know, ask for the sale. Let them say no, because a lot of salesmen, they'll convince themselves that the person is going to say no before they even get there. So they don't even ask. They've already made up the decision for them. No, let them say no. The Airbnb, the hotel. Say, hey, I got 10 people. I got 20 people coming in here July 4th. Can we get a discount, uh, some type of discount code? I'm pretty sure they can. You know, they do have some stuff that's going on, but these guys are way out ahead of the game, too. It's, it's these guys that 
that um, put together these sort of like these dating parties or whatever it is. They fly, you know, the plane tickets included. I think the parties included the hotel. I'm pretty sure they're getting some type of discounts because they got a lot of men doing it. Where the you know, like you have three or four foreigners and then thirty Filipinas, they're doing that all around different places. What's up, Sammy Davis? He said, "Rest in peace to John Moonshine's shoulders." It's almost unbelievable, man. Sometimes I think about it that he's dead. I still can't believe it. Yeah, he says, going to need legal weed to make Philippines. Well, just go somewhere else, man. That's all. That's all you have to do. Just go somewhere. Go to Thailand. It's legal. When I was there, man, I had a chance to. I blew it because my man was so, you know, I'm on walking street, so you can't, um, your attention is, you know, you don't, you can't keep, hold your attention in any place. I walked right past a weed door. And I said, well, damn, I need to just go in there just to see what's in there. I said, I'm going to do it on the way back. Well, hell, I didn't make it. JV said I was a passport bro before that term. Yeah, according to Tiffany Hill in her book, The World Belongs to Us Too, Millennial Women and the New Black Travel Movement, she said that Black men, I mean, black people have been unapologetically promoting international travel since the dawn of the 20th century. And you got guys like Marcus Garvey, Carter G. Woodson, that they were telling people to see the world. You know, even though Marcus Garvey was talking about going back to Africa, hell, that's international travel. Anyway, you look at it. Carter G. Woodson taught in the Philippines for years. In his travels around the world to review educations and, you know, the difference between how black people, have, you know, how people of color around the planet and white people are educated. He traveled all around the world. You know, he was a, a promoter of world travel way back then. But instead of us getting stuck in, in these arguments, these subjective arguments, we need to come together like the women have come together so it can benefit us. Hey, I wish I had 20 guys coming over here with me and we could have got a discount on the plane. I mean, these corporations are actively pursuing these groups. Hey, I got 272 people here. Imagine if we all bought a ticket to the Philippines. You going to tell me we couldn't get a discount? you damn right we could. And that's what they did. But see, somebody watching would be like, oh, they're going to give Calvin a discount. They're gonna get, he's going to get something, a commission. Not even knowing that I'm not. But this is what they're going to think. So they're going to say, oh, we're not going to do it. I ain't going to put no money in his pocket. You know. Because y'all don't realize that I go on these other channels, not, not Filipino channels, but these Manosphere channels, and, man, you guys are quiet as a mouse, man. Y'all got y'all checkbooks out. Y'all fully supporting these guys. Uh, no, no, he said, uh, Ozzy Levin, 41, said, you mean how many full-page stamp passports I have? Yeah, see, we're the guys who should be leading the way, educating the new guys with, with the passports. But, yeah, these women, man, they've just taken over, man. You know, uh, here's, here's a crazy thing now. Because I like facts. I like numbers, man. You know, everybody can be subjective. You know, a lot of things are subjective until you start putting it on paper. There's 3% of African Americans with passports traveled abroad outside of America in 2013. It doubled in 2016. Then it went up in 2014, sorry. Then it shot up to 37% in 2016, fueled by young black women between 18 and 35 with, I quote, 
a desire to reclaim the dignity and pleasures they are often denied in the United States. Unquote. That was Tiffany in Hill. See, uh, that's facts. We can learn a lot from these women instead of bashing them, instead of fighting them, man. Yeah, yeah, $16 a night, yeah, in the Airbnb. She said she would take 19000 for a whole month, and that's no deposit. You just give her 19000 You come here to the Philippines for a month, you want to live on an island paradise, Sikiho Island, you're right there at the beach. I could throw a rock, literally, into the ocean from where I was. And, you know, white sand, not white like this, but y'all seen it, that beige, clean sand, that nobody's there, nobody's around. Yeah, they got that kind of stuff going on over here. Hey, Richard Smith says, yeah, I get the same comments about money, Calvin, as a creator who did the Dominican Republic for two years before coming to Columbia in December. I thought they were only doing it to black men. I don't know. No, they, they, everybody catches hell over here, man. I mean, we catch hell. And I'm like, why? What, what are we supposed to do? I mean, they don't realize that to become monetized on YouTube, I don't care where you are, and earn any kind of money, man, it's a momentous task. It's not easy. They throw it around as if it's easy and anybody can do it. If anybody could do it and it was so easy, then why aren't more people doing it? They're trying, but it's extremely, extremely hard. They don't realize they're really giving us a compliment. I don't know how I got monetized like that. It was never in my mind. Okay? Okay, Mike M says, take a poll of what everyone is budgeting to spend per month in the Philippines. That's a good idea, but you know we all you're gonna spend more money over here than you plan. Because the woman that you're gonna be with, she's gonna she's gonna compel you to spend more money. She's not gonna say anything, but you're just gonna spend more money than you planned on spending. And that's a fact. That's not subjective. And you ain't gonna come over here and be with that little 22 year old bombshell and you know your nose is wide open and you trying to impress her you know it happens to the best of us guys and I, I wouldn't feel embarrassed about it but I would bring at least I would bring an extra thousand for that well you know it's undercover over here but I really wouldn't know man you know because I don't use drugs so I really wouldn't know, to be honest with you. You don't want food with drugs over here anyway. I don't even go anywhere near it. They don't play over here. There was in, in that book, no, not that book, but another article. And listen to this. Anybody's talking about people don't work remotely over here in the Philippines or anywhere around the world and pay taxes. There's a black lady, she was from Chicago. She was going to Thailand. So she asked her employee, says, hey, is it okay if I work remotely from Thailand for three months? Of course, they let her. She said she went there, did her work from there, did not pay the Thailand government, not one penny. She doesn't have to. She's working remotely from there. She's not working in Thailand. She's working from Thailand. But anyway, the travel bug hit her. She said when she got home, she couldn't, she said, uh, what do you call that? Being repatriated back home was hard because of what she had saw out there. And now she's living abroad. This is the same woman that went to Italy. There's so many stories like that, guys. We need to write our stories down. We need to get them out there. Starting with me. We need to control the narrative, guys, because they getting ready. They pretty much come down hard on passport bros before it even gets started. And we're like this instead of being like this.
Brandon Bond said, yeah, one of my favorite things you ever said was, you know how much money you got, but you don't know how much time you got left. Yeah, when John passed away, that's some real stuff. It's true, though. So we're saving up, saving up over there. When a lot of us already have enough money, man, you know, we won't take our foot off the brake. Just take your foot off the brake. Go ahead and uh, book the flight, book the hotel, come on over here. It's a community over here, man, and it's growing. If you fly to Cebu, Spines, Sydney, Anthony, Trinidad, Derek, I got five. I'm talking about top of the land guys right there that I just named. Michael Beach Alive, six. That will take you under their wing, man, and show you around to get you started. When I came over here, it was zero. For many, many years, it was zero. The Bachelor of Science said that's the old town in uh, Bangkok, beautiful part of the city. Yeah, I was in, um, we stayed on Soy 11 because Eric Terry, man, he booked both the hotels. They were nice too. And it's, you know, I, I had a fortune enough um, to have traveled with him because he's one of those guys where money's no object. You know, he's intelligent, he's a professor. You know, he knows what he's doing. So we tried a lot of different things, you know, went a lot of different places and, you know, enjoyed it. But he eventually went to Phuket for um, two days and I went to Padia for my two days. But we hooked back up in uh, Bangkok. He says 8,000 miles away. He said, Calvin, you're the most influential vlogger on YouTube in my man. Thank you, man. You know, I'm proud of that. I'm proud of that. That we built up a community, excuse me, and it's growing. And we're helping each other. Like with Derek's situation, he's got the Airbnb. I don't get a one peso from that. But I do get the good feeling knowing that somebody's going to come over here and get a decent place for $10 a night. And they can rent their motorcycle for another 10 You're not going to beat that. See, and now he's just about fully booked. He's got all the business he can take. You know, same with Heidi's cabin. The same with the engineer who built my house. He's so busy now, he can't take on any more jobs because of my channel. See? that Yeah, I'm, I'm happy for that because I'm giving back, man. You know, I'm not just over here taking. It means a lot to me. See, what people don't understand is out of that 30000 I gave back 15000 I've given away in the last two years. I'm talking about just last year. Over the last two years, almost 2 million pesos, man. Imagine if I'd have kept that money. I probably wouldn't be as happy as I am and living the life I am, but I gave away almost 2 million pesos, man. It's well documented. But nobody wants to point that out. That I couldn't really be living large if I wasn't over here helping anybody. But it's not about that, man. You know, you can't eat money. I'm not going to live my best life. But meanwhile, people close by are struggling. I can't help everybody, but that's no excuse not to try. See? So, yeah, man, I thank you for that, brother. I appreciate that because that's what I'm, I'm trying to do. Yeah, he said she's with a fork. That's a red flag. It's a lot of stuff I, I try to share with you guys. Okay, uh, Austin, Mississippi said, I have the passport, no stamps, but I'm ex-Navy. Yeah, well, get you a passport, man. I mean, get you a stamp. Yeah, I, I don't fool with weed either, but, you know, I don't knock him back. I've got a brother, man. He, he can't go one day without weed. You know, he was, I forgot what he said to me. Um... I don't know what he said to me one time. Yeah, it was something of, something, and that we were talking about. And he said, oh, that man, that, that's a crime. And I looked at him. I was like, man, when you go and buy weed from the dope man, that's a damn crime. You know, shut up, man. Quit trying to be so damn, you know, righteous. 
When you go into the dope man's house and buy that weed and get in your car and drive home, that's a crime. <laughs> uh, Ozzy says, I'm kind of paranoid of volcanoes. I was close to Mount St. Helens when it blew up. Yeah, well, you know, they're going to give you plenty of time. I think they gave people time enough to get out of there then, right? He says, how about trying to get her on the show? Who are you talking about, Larry? I'm not going anywhere near Filipinos again and putting them on my show, on videos. It's enough videos out there for that, guys. I'm telling you. These are, you know, and these aren't old videos. My channel's only two years old. There's so much of that out there. If you don't know enough, if you're watching the Filipino Filipino vlog, Philippine vlogs, rather, and you haven't gotten your feel of Filipinos and dating and what it's about, what it's not about, what to do, what not to do, I feel sorry for you. There's nothing new is going to come across that screen. It's just going to be another fresh face, that's all. That, by the way, you're not going to have access to, man. It's a game. I'm telling on them because... I'm helping you guys. You know, I'm telling you that all the women that I uh, interviewed, see, this is when I was naive in my channel, man. They all got financed, man. One of them even got married. She was earning 50 pesos a day. Now she's living like a queen over here, the man that put her on a pedestal. But I won't be a part of that anymore, you know. They was lining up. If you think I'm playing, and you ask Merlin, this is not, I'm not making this up. They were lining up outside my door over in Margarita Village wanting to get interviewed by me because they knew they were going to hit the jackpot. I'm not going to do it anymore, man. I'm not going to do it. Yeah, Roger. He said, TJ Johnson, shout out to Roger for locking that down. All you YouTube vultures forced his hand. <laughs> yeah. Wow, he said, I had my passport since I was five years old. I'm on my fourth one, bro. Damn. Yeah, they, they're good people, man. I'm, I'm glad for them. You know, when you get married over here, there's no divorce. But it just goes to show you that they're a perfect example of what I be talking about. The Filipinos, they want a Filipino man, Filipino man. The ones who want us, want us. It's just like I come from America. I'm a black man. Most black women want black men. But some of us, like me, we want somebody else. Okay, the same way with them. And it's okay. There's nothing wrong with preferences. But, you know, it just goes to show you. But most of these women over here, man, we've got our... We've got a pool of women over here that are available to us. Not all of them, though. And you, it's important that you understand that. Don't come over here thinking that you can have any woman over here because you're going to get your feelings hurt. Yeah, uh, the global, this is a good uh, point. He said the global vagabond, many employees are finding, are having problems finding people willing to travel. I don't get it. Now, when I did that video about, you know, the Philippines, over 8 million people couldn't be wrong about the Philippines. The American companies doing business in the Philippines, 100% of their clients, no, 40% of their employees asked to be transferred to the Philippines. 100% of them, the ones that got transferred over here, are satisfied with the country. Yeah, yeah, he better be better off staying in America. You're right. Okay, he said, my passport expires in 2024, coming up on my first renewal. That's a shocking stats right there. It is. Because we take it for granted that everybody has a passport when 
Okay, I've got a nephew. He works in Iraq. He's a contractor. I believe he's the only one, other one in my family. Now, I've got another nephew. You know, he works for a, a um, catalyst company. And sometimes they go overseas. And he had to get his passport. So out of just hundreds of people in my family, maybe three, three of us have passports. And I know my sister's probably got a passport card. Because she goes on cruises. Alpina R says traveling eases the soul and sometimes lowers the anxiety unless you find yourself in the middle of Manila during rush hour. Uh, how would what helps? Says passport and enhanced driver's license is required here to fly soon. Yeah. They've been saying that for years. I guess they're finally going to bring the hammer down because Kentucky, we're lagging behind everybody. Will Sutton says, I thought Roger and Ismi were already married. They finished each other's sentences on their blog. No, they've been living this for, for years. They finally got married. He said, why do you say we run, Frankie Stan said, at the end of your videos about helping others. That's the only word you say I don't understand. What's a we run? Or whether you're saying I've been wondering what you're saying. No, I'm saying we run because majority of my viewers, Frankie, are in America where weed is legal. Okay, yeah, I'm saying we run. Uh, you know, most of the states now you can make a we run. See, I say well, they don't want them late grocery runs, beer runs, weed runs. When you're watching the football game or the NBA, yeah, weed is legal in America. 70% of my viewers are in America. So, yeah, I'm saying weed. They're going to see something out in the street because in Kentucky, I don't believe we have any of those weed places yet. So you still got to go to the dope, man. You still got to go to the hood on the corner. You might see somebody out there. Buy them something to eat. Buy them something to drink. Give them a few dollars. Alexander Neverman, everyone in my family has their passport except my nephew. Wow. Yeah, network, bro. And that's what it's all about. I built, one of the proudest things is this community I built up. TJ. I mean, guys who come over and actually hang out together, man, and, you know, be balling out together, you know, because when you out there trying to tell your story and you by yourself, man, people have a tendency not to believe you, but when you got four or five people and y'all all telling the same story, see, that's what I'm talking about, and, you know, I just rather share my good times with people anyway, what, what do they say? Success is nothing unless you have somebody to share it with. I believe that. I believe that. Success in whatever it is you're doing. Yeah, he said, like a coffee run, but for weed. Yeah, yeah, weed run, man. Weed is legal over there. I got a brother who really into that weed. I mean, really, man. He's got weed in that bumpy face. He gets that, man, and he's bliggity. He get that damn bumpy face, gin, that smearing off, bumpy face. But he's a nurse. He said, TJ Johnson and Bill, what's going on? What's up, Tito? Child? He said, my nephew offered to buy my sister a first class round trip ticket to South Korea to see her three grandchildren. She refused, yeah. 13% of Americans have never been on an airplane. That's of all the, the facts that they put out there. I think that's the one that really got me. And that, you know, I think they got me more than anything. Yeah, we, we don't need anybody's approval. And that's what I don't understand. I'm like, well, how do the people even know you're going anywhere? But to be honest with you now, if I'm traveling overseas, I need to tell somebody. There needs to be somebody on this other end that knows I'm going. That way, if something happens, if I end up disappearing or something, they say, yeah, he told me, but 
it's going to be somebody close, somebody who's encouraging me to go. Because if you sit around, if you tell somebody you're going somewhere, the people I was dealing with, man, they're going to talk you out of it, man. But yeah, one other thing. Hey, uh, DJ Jarvis, thanks for the super chat. He said, as an owner operator, I talked to dispatchers living in the Philippines. I think freight dispatcher brokering is a great business to run from the Philippines. Well, see, the BPO industry, and this is something that you could talk to TJ about, it's exploded in the Philippines because of their um, ability to speak proper English. I can understand Filipinos a whole lot more than I can understand Indians, which was the number one. But the Philippines, I believe, has overtaken India as the preferred uh, telemarketing country. And a lot of guys over here are working remotely. There's a subscriber, man, who he does some type of survey for a company in America. He lives here, you know, he's here on a tourist visa. But he just works remotely from his phone and his computer. He's got a good enough internet connection and nobody knows the wiser. They just do that because we're on YouTube and they keep throwing that out there about this. Now. What's the difference between what I'm doing and what he's doing? It's no different, guys. But they keep thinking if they tell a lie enough, it's going to be a truth. No, it's going to be an old lie. It's no more truth than that. Than anything. They would have to shut down everything and that would destroy the tourist industry. As a matter of fact, the fact that you are a tourist it probably exempts you from paying taxes, man. Of course, I can't go outside here right now, go over to Save More, and fill out an application to work at Save More on a tourist visa, guys. That's what it means by you can't work in the Philippines. If BIR, BIR came knocking on my door right now and said, hey, Cal, let me see your um, YouTube numbers, what you're getting from YouTube. Okay, you owe us taxes. Guess what? I would gladly pay it, but I'm going to say, look, taxation without representation. Give me a, give me a, a, a citizenship. But I don't have a problem with that. If it's Lee, if I'm uh, obligated to do that, I would do it. Andrew Harris says, I'm, a, I'm very afraid to fly. Um, let me tell you something about that. You're more likely to slip in your shower hit your head on the side of the tub and kill yourself than to die in a plane crash. Just want to, I don't want to scare you and make you not want to go in there and take a shower, Andrew, but to be honest with you, with me, my anxiety works on me before I ever get on the plane. Once I'm on the plane, I don't have a problem. It's getting on the plane. That's where my problem is. It's like the two weeks before my flight, I can't sleep. I'm not going to get any sleep for that two weeks. I'm going over and over in my mind, the plane going down and all that. Then when you get on the plane, you get up there, it's, smooth, it's smoother than riding in a car. Lightning, three, five, once a cow, your boy, George in South Florida, positive thoughts, positive results. That's right. Hoping to have a beer with you this year. Going in December for one or two months. Duma, Valencia, St. Carlos, the Val. That's a great plan. Minus the beer for me. I'll, I'll take a, a cold too big. That's water. Uh, this blue water that I drank over here. Guys, I quit drinking over 24 years ago. May the 13th will be 25 years. I haven't had a drink, drugs, any Man, a mood altering drugs except for pussy. That's it. That's the only man and mood altering drug I've had. But as far as drinking, I don't drink, man. I'm, I like drinking too much. David Jackson says, I can't wait to move to Bahal. Man, I was just in the Bahal two weeks ago. And I tell you, I could live in Peng Lao for the rest of my life. Just on that one little stretch of beach. It's just, it, it's it's not too crowded. It's not too secluded. It's just right. And the water's nice. It's just enough going on. 
not to get on my nerves, like the main strip of Barakai. There's too many people there. He said, maybe they're afraid of flying. Yeah, you know, but all of that is education too, Buster. But I'm just saying, level 13% is a lot. But what about the 13% that own no travel luggage at all? Plastic bags not included. Not even a carry-on bag or nothing, guys. That's crazy. Will Rose says, also, while getting passport, go to the AAA office, AAA. Get international driver's permit. It's valid form of identification in 144 countries. Don't need passport 24-7. That's a great idea. Thank you for sharing that. Now, remember, your valid license is good for 90 days in the Philippines. Okay? And a lot of times, you can use that as valid ID. The only time... The only problem I run into trying to use my license as a valid ID is if I'm trying to exchange money over here. They certainly want to see that passport. And, you know, do you blame them? But, yeah, they want to see that passport. Anytime you're really dealing with money. Now, when you get over here to the Philippines and you, you're an expat here, you're, you're living here. You're going to be here for any considerable period of time. What I would suggest is if you go to a place... These remittance places like M Lawyer, Palawan, different places. Go ahead and tell them to get you a customer card. What they'll do is take your ID. All you have to take that passport or license one time. The rest of the time, they're going to give you a card. I'm going to show it to you because this is great information right here, guys. You don't have to carry that passport anytime you want to send money or receive money. You can just take this. This M Lawyer card. Got my name and everything on the back. I don't care where I am in the Philippines. If I go to an M Lawyer to pick up money, I just show them this. And I'm done. I don't have to carry that big bulky um, passport because now, remember I told you with these damn passports, let me show you something. I don't know why they started this, but they did. And this is very important for anybody coming over here. Look at this. Look at that. That's all the receipts from immigration when you go to renew. You got to keep it on your passport. So when you go to renew, they want to see all this. It didn't used to be like that. It used to be this. It used to be that. Right here. It's stamp. Oh, not a stamp. Of. It used to be that. I guess they ran out. They give you a receipt. You got to have all that, especially if you're going for like a motion for reconsideration. If you're going for a, a exit clearance, you got to have all that history of your time in the country. And so you don't want to carry this thing around. Make you a copy. Make you a copy of this. Make you a copy of that page right there. You know, the biography page. And be done with it. But yeah, guys, we got a lot to learn from these women. I tell you what. They're flying jets while we're Riding tricycles over here. As far as this tourist thing is concerned. 64% of travelers worldwide are women. And 36% men. Women dominate the travel industry. We can learn a lot from women when it comes to traveling. And you say, well, the United States is only 4% of the population. Well, it's the same. 63% of women... 37% of men travel for leisure in America. 80% of all travel-related decisions are made by women. 11% of Americans have never left outside the state. It boggles my mind, guys. 
Wow. Half of the respondents have never owned a passport. So imagine there's people out there who have never even applied for a passport before. You know, and it doesn't matter where you go. We don't have to give a reason. Just coming is good enough. Just getting on the plane and flying somewhere else is good enough. You don't have that, like the global guy said, why are you explaining all this stuff to people? We're grown men. If you want to go to Thailand or the Philippines or somewhere like that, just do it. I wouldn't waste my time with it because you're seeing what you're dealing with. You're dealing with ignorance, man. People who never left their state. Camilla Cookie says, hey, Cal, I went to the Philippines and I loved it. I should have gone there a long time ago, Shelby. I know. Your wife's from the Philippines. I, I think, did you meet your wife? Where did you meet your wife? Uh, Wendy. Macton Barber said, Cal, I don't think you need to stop the, vil the videos of the Philippines. Your content was good, but I clearly understand why you don't. Yeah, it's because it can easily be misinterpreted as taking advantage of women, see? And if if all the foreign, foreign vloggers stop making those videos, interviewing Filipinas, talking about dating and all that, right? And, and the landscape is free of foreigners and only Filipinas are left because very few Filipino men that even talk to foreigners. It's all Filipinas because we taught them what to do. The government will clearly see who's exploiting Filipinas. Filipinas are exploiting Filipinas, but they're going to get a pass, guys. So you can you don't have anything to worry about. Okay, for the near future right now, they're going to still be making all the cringy stuff. And they're still going to be parading just a long line of beautiful young women in front of the screen. You know, but the, the nitty gritty is most of them women they ain't studying you. They know that all they have to do is talk about dating and put women in front of their, that's the money. That's the money uh, recipe. They learned it from us. I profited off of those videos, but see, I've done 1.2, 1,200 videos. I'm going to say 25% of them, maybe. 10%, I'd say, are dating and, you know, Filipinas, because I've only done five actual interviews. I'm just going in another direction. It's a whole lot more to the Philippines than women. And those are, you're going to, if you're new to to the Philippines and you're a blogger and you want to get views and you want to get a following, that's what it's going to do. But if you're a foreigner, man, you're putting yourself squarely under that magnifying glass and then I'm going to give you a pass because let me tell you this, and I don't condone anything that Expat Kings did. I don't condone anything Mr. Pogi did. But if those are the two videos that you're looking at, man, it pales in comparison to what these Filipinos are putting out there, man. Imagine if I came on there and talking about do Filipinos like to take it in the booty, like these videos that's out there. I mean, they're cringy, man. I could not make those videos, but they can. So let them make them. Okay, you're still going to get your entertainment if that's what you want, but you're just not going to get it from me. But yeah, you want to see who's really, when we get off, when, we, when the landscape is clear, and all the foreigners stop making those videos, you're going to see who's exploiting Filipinos. It's not us. They're exploiting themselves. They're going to run that down to the ground. Okay? That's what they're going to do. They've already done it. It's like opening up a sorry, sorry store. Everybody wants to open up a sorry, sorry store now. They know that we want to hear about sex. We are just infatuated with Filipinos. They know that if they sit there in front of that screen, you're going to watch them and watch them and watch them. You're going to send money. You're going to send super chats. You're going to do all of that because they learned it from us. Remember I told you the Filipinos, they're, they're intelligent. They're not stupid. They sit around and watch foreigners do it and say, wow, 
this guy built a house and look at this Filipino Harris. He built the house and blah, blah, blah. Let me do it. And now all of a sudden, you got so many channels out there, man, that are doing that, parading these young women in front of that camera. That's exploitation. That's as close to human trafficking as you can get. You putting these young women in front of this camera for these grown ass men to look at and thirst after and really want to meet. But if I just say one word wrong, they're coming after me. So no, I don't want nothing to do with it. They can have that. I, I, I got a whole lot I can talk about. Like we're talking about today. Raymond Walker says, surprising how many people don't have a passport. I thought the number would be higher, especially after the pandemic. No. Matter of fact, I, I'm glad you said that because I've got, I've got some numbers on that from the U.S. State Department. Raymond, you read my mind. It says right here, it says, according to the U.S. State Department, in March 2021, 3 million Americans traveled outside the country, down from 4 million in March 2020. It's creeping back up. But at the peak, Raymond, only about 5% of Americans ever travel abroad. We're not talking about Canada and Mexico. We're talking about overseas. We're not talking about the DR and all those places. We're talking about overseas, Europe, Asia, Southeast Asia, Africa, Australia, New Zealand, very few. Dana Milton said, sadly, Calvin, most people resist change. So expect them to travel halfway around the world expecting too much. Yeah. And that's why I say a lot of, a lot of us over there, we're in the fourth quarter and we say, what the hell, I'm too old. We think we're too old. And we're set in our ways. And you're right. But you don't have to come this far. Hell, Mexico... I had some of my best times in Playa del Carmen. I certainly enjoyed Cancun. You don't have to fly all the way over here, but you can leave America or uh, wherever you're from, wherever you think that your life's not living up to its potential and you're looking for a change, why not take the chance? That's all. You can always go back home if it don't work out, but just to sit there and and marinate in that misery because everybody around you is going to be miserable. I wouldn't do it. I'd take a chance. It, it's very easy. It's re it really, when you put it in contrast to the other things we spend money on, it's cheap to take a trip overseas. And it's life changing. Hey, uh, Danny, what's up? I know you just got back, man. I know you repatriate now. What do they call it when uh, prisoner of war is brought back to his home country? What do they call it? D something. That's what you're going through now. He said, once you make one trip to the Philippines, you're forever hooked. Yeah. If you have just the regular experience that most of us have, you're going to come back, man, over and over and over. I had, um, when I first, my first trip here, and I've told this story before, but it's relevant to what you're saying. I'm at Tamboli Beach Resort. I'm at the resort. I'm in the water. And here's this Aust Austrian guy. He's an older guy. He's drinking a beer. He says, young man, he said, how many times you been to the Philippines? I said, it's my first time. He said, you're going to fall in love with this place. And you're going to come back again, again, again. I'm like, yeah, this guy's drunk. Hell, two weeks later, I was, no, no, no. Yeah, two weeks later, I was back after I left. And I've been coming ever since. 13 plus years, 14 years in in um, April. I, I, don't, I don't really know. I, coming from America, I shouldn't like this place. You know, with our high standard of living and, you know, the way we're indoctrinated to think we're better than everybody else and we're the greatest country in the world. Why, why should I leave? And I shouldn't like this place, but 
but I don't like it. I love it. I fell in love with it, and I probably, I'm probably going to die here. Hey, A.C. King said, Calvin, you're right. He said, even Sharon Lapu Lapu has gotten a little suggestive with her content and vlog titles, but I got to admit, I like it the way she does it. Yeah, and let's leave it to them to do it because they're not going to get any trouble. We don't want anybody to get in trouble over A.C. King, not over making videos, man. You know, I don't want Expat King and I don't want Mr. Pogue and all them guys. I don't want them to get in trouble over here, man. You know, there's rules you got to follow, though. You know, there's, you know, you got to be respectful. But to be honest with you, man, what he got, the fact is it, fact of the matter was that girl was 17. If she wouldn't have been 17, what he was doing, if you, if you watch the video, it's nothing. But if you watch some of these other videos, man, they're parading these girls back and forth. It's like. I don't know if you've ever been to Soy 6 before in Thailand. It's like that, except it's on video. It's no different. It's no different. It's the same thing. Oh, such and such wants to meet a foreigner. That's human trafficking, man. That's exploiting women right there for views and everything like that, man. I'm not knocking anybody down. I'm just saying, let the Filipinas do it. They're good at it, and they're not going to get in trouble. You're going to get in trouble. I'm going to get in trouble if I do it. Clarence Wilkinson said, I've been here for 12 years, and I love it here. This is my new home. Peace. Yeah. My brother said, come home. I said, I am home. Why don't you come over to see me, man? They want me to come home. You come over here, man. Mike you know, says, my brother went to the Philippines about 50 times from Hawaii. And finally just moved there. Yeah. And that's what I um, decided to do. I just kept coming back and forth. And them long flights, man, they'll get you, man. I just said, hell, I ain't going back. I'm not going back. They got to put me to sleep. That way when I wake up, I'm back in America. Other than that, I'm going to watch that clock. I, I, I ain't even thinking about going back, but my man is already working on me about getting on that plane for all them hours. Billy said, that's what I'm afraid of. When I go to the fields, I mean, I want to leave. But yeah, I'll tell you what, it's going to be tough, buddy. M.M. Pruitt says, always great info. One year in English City so far, and your channel has been my guide for many beneficial and positive things during my stay here. Thank you, Cal. Hey, thank you. Brother, I'm just sharing my boots on the ground experience. Keep some of you guys out of trouble, man. Yeah, yeah. He said, Danny's right. Once you get the field Demi, you're hooked. It's just something about this place. Uh, Geechee Lion says the AC King, yeah, shameless. You know, but they 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 get away with it. So let them do it, guys, because I don't want to see anybody. You know, because you over here, you're at the mercy of their law. Excuse me. And something that you may not even, hell, after your arraignment in America, you're done, may get you 20 years over here. It's just a chance you're taking. You have to be real careful. You have to respect the laws. And one of the big laws over here, and I tell you over and over, is underage women, man. You can't do that over here. There's no excuse for it. They're not going to buy any excuse you got. Oh, she told me she was 19. Well, she's not. She's 17. It's not, like I tell people all the time, it's not, there's, there's not much difference between a 17 and an 18-year-old, except the 18-year-old is legal. I mean, you know, you can't take five seconds to ask a woman for her ID. Don't take nobody's word for it. Then you deserve whatever you got coming to you, man, because I'm going to tell you something. You got to be careful. Over there, we call them currents, right? Over here, they're called concerned citizens. You're out there with that young girl. Some concerned citizens going to pick up the phone, man. It happens all the time. And they're going to call the authorities. You're sitting there in the airport waiting on your flight or in the bus station or at the pier. And here they come. You ain't got a leg to stand on. If that girl doesn't have an idea, it's not 18. They're going to kick butt and take questions later. 
the Norwegian guy over here. Look it up in 2018. That's what happened to him. He'd been knowing that family for years, traveling with an 18-year-old, a 19-year-old, a 9, and an 8-year-old. Going to the beach, the mother's going to follow. A concerned citizen said, hey, guess what? They locked him up. The 18 and 19, they weren't even trying to hear that, what they had to say. Even when the mother showed up at the police station, and we don't want to hear it. He's in violation of Republic Act 7610. He got out on bond, flew home, and hasn't come back. Took him years to get his name cleared. He's never come back. He was building these people a home. He had no ill intentions at all. So be careful. You got to follow the law over here. All you guys, oh, no, man, you know, this is, you know, the age of consent is 12, or 16. Not for you, it's not. They've got laws to counteract that, to protect these children over here. So if you want to come over here with that foolishness, come on. They got something for you over here. And you don't want to be in jail over here, okay? Our jails in America are like the Shangri-La compared to what's over here. I wouldn't let Curly stay in jail here. But, you know, you, you want to do it, you know every damn thing. Then the middle said, guys, go to Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico, St. Croix, St. Thomas, St. John first. Yeah, you need a passport, and most of the population speaks English. That's great, great information and advice. You know, take baby steps first, man, but at least take some steps. Get off the couch. Okay, it says, if men aren't traveling, what are they doing, Calvin? Well, it says men spend most of their leisure time watching television. It says 96% of Americans 15 and over are engaged in some sort of leisure and sport activity. Men spend, on average, 5.6 hours daily engaged in such activity with three of those hours watching television, followed by socializing and exercising. That's how we spend our time. Other than sleeping, other than um, eat, I mean, working. Hey, well, Robinson, Calvin is Thailand, Colombia, DR, and Brazil. Why did you choose the Philippines? Thanks for that super chat, brother. I'm going to be honest with you. The Philippines chose me because I had no, I never had any um, intention on living here, uh, coming back over here over and over and over again. For anybody that doesn't know, when I got divorced, I walked away with 20000 U.S. dollars. That's all I had. She got everything else. And I was fine with that because I knew that I could start over better than she could. Remember, I don't have a problem with women. You want to divorce? Okay, I, I, I signed for the divorce. Okay. So I had wrote down in a book the places I wanted to go. I wrote down the Philippines, no specific place, just the Philippines, and Perth, Australia. Because the guys, those are the two places when I was in the Navy, I was on an aircraft carrier. People, every day, somebody would have a story about these two places. So I didn't have the money. And then I, once I got the 20000 I said, okay, I'm going around the world. But I'm going to start in the Philippines. I never went anywhere else but Thailand on a visa run. It chose me, man. It did. It checked all the boxes for me. The people just treated me, man. I'm telling you guys, you think I'm joking, man. I get off the plane and there's a woman with a big sign with my name on it. I knew then, I said, man, there's something about this place. because. Now, these places that you're talking about, I could easily live there, especially Thailand, especially I've been to Cartagena, Colombia, never been to the DR, been to Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. I could easily adapt because I'm a grunt, man. How many times I got to tell you, I'm a grunt. And most of the people watching this are grunts. We don't have a problem coming to these places and assimilating. And, you know, getting what it is we we come for and learning our way around and finding 
what we need, we don't have a problem with that. But yeah, to answer your question, the Philippines chose me. That's right, Harry. Philippines, the Philippines chose me. And so did the I, I just had never been treated this well, never before. And never since have I been treated as well as as I've been treated here. I don't know why. I've been here long enough. People know I'm not rich. They know I'm not famous. They know I don't have a whole lot of nothing but love for them. And I'm treated as well as I've ever been treated. And that's why I've stayed. If it ain't broke, don't break it. That's all I'm saying. I'm certainly not going to break it. Yeah, a butcher, you're right. He said, Cal, you should have went to the Philippines last. And that's what I tell other guys who have that. They said, man, I'm going to Thailand. I'm going to the Philippines. I'm going to Vietnam. And this. I said, okay, whatever you do, Go to the Philippines last because, man, you something might get hold of you over here. Uh, okay, he said, Big big Cal says, Australia's gone woke. Don't bother with it. Not even Perth, man. Come on. Yeah, Clarence Wilkinson said, yeah, bro. If you come here with the right mindset, you would do just fine here. And I'm an old salty dog from the Navy. This place is great only if you play by the rules. I couldn't have said it better. But you got to have an open mind over here. You got to have an open mind. And if you do, man, you have the time of your life over here. I just don't run into anything that I can't handle over here. And then when you combine that with, I've never been treated as well anywhere as I'm treated here. I mean, you know, that's game, mat, game, set, match. Hey, Tori Mackey says, I've been to, uh, what's this? The Caymans Islands, that's what you're saying? London, and took a cruise through Norway, just being close to water is where I want to be. Well, we, we have a natural affinity to water. We're 75% water, Tori, and that's why. When I went to Cancun, Mexico, I was running, doing my morning jog, and I see all these people on the, the, a lot of these Mexicans are just standing there looking at the water. It was like they were praying or something. And I got it then. I was like, wow, no wonder why I love the beach so much, why I love the water so much. Uh, Vince Ferguson said, Cal, let's be honest, most black Americans don't have the proper resources to travel, but some of them do if they just broaden their horizons. Well, believe it or not, we do. What are we, what are, as, as we collectively, what, over $1 trillion worth of spending power over there? You have enough. But remember I'm saying in contrast to what we spend our money on, Going on a trip overseas is nothing. Look at the Jordans we buy. Look at all that old uh, fake jewelry we buy. And I don't mean fake. I mean, they'll take gold. It's, it, everybody knows the pawn shops do this in America anyway. They'll take your gold ring, pure gold, and th that you don't come back and get Then they'll melt it down and they'll put brass with it and everything else. A lot of what we're wearing is not all the way gold. We spend a lot of money on that. All these old cloudy diamonds. All these old used cars. Man, don't tell me that we don't have the money to travel. We do. We just spend it on, we spend it foolishly, Vince. Trust me, I've been there, man. We buy dope. We buy uh, alcohol. Spending money on these extravagant birthday parties for one-year-old babies and crazy stuff like that that we do over there. Yeah, we got the money. We got the resources, man. The black people I was hanging around with, they damn sure got it. But we just spend it doing other stuff. You know, we'll go somewhere. We used to go to, uh, to Gatlinburg and stay up in the mountains all the time. Hell. 
it's expensive to rent them cabins, man, with the swimming pool in the bottom floor, the movie theater and all that. But you either go there or you come to the Philippines. You know, we didn't, I didn't know anything about Philippines. Nobody in my family had ever uttered the word Philippines, especially my ex-American wife, until I started coming over here. So, yeah, we, we got the money. So, you know, I'm being honest. We got it. Hey, RV, RV, you said, because you treat Filipinos well also. I do, man. You know, I just treat people the way they want to be treated. I was raised like that, man. We didn't have a lot of money, man. Matter of fact, we didn't have any money for real, man. But my mother gave us the most expensive life education, man, that, that money can buy. You can't put a price on that. We read, you know, everybody in my family reads. And because of that, you know, that opened up another world, man, for me. But, yeah, it was always imperative that I treat people the way that they want to be treated, man. That's been the key to my success, whether it was in the insurance business, whether it was when I had my own little business. I called it Calvin's Amazing Things. When I when those people helped me to stop drinking and they said, in order for you to keep it, you got to give it back. All you got to do is reach down and help somebody else. I've been doing it ever since, really, man. It's just it's just a no brainer for me because I want to keep what I've got. Uh, Brandon Bond said most of my friends pull out game is weak. Yeah, facts. Road to the Philippines. Danny says you have to make traveling to the Philippines or any other place for that matter. Priority. It's right. But our priorities are screwed up. You know, I'm going to tell you something. I got so mad at my daughter. Okay, she's well, and I don't know why they do stuff like this. She says, Daddy, can you send me $200? You know, and I'm like, okay, yeah, for what? For my birthday cake. And I'm like, for your birthday cake, it made me start not to send it. That's the stupid way we spend money over there. When I was little like that, man, my mother would go out there and get a box of Dunkin' Hands, mix that up, and hell, we'd, we'd uh, lick the side of them, but we'd fight over who could who got the mixing spoons and who got the bowl. If I got the bowl, then my sister got the mixing spoon. We were happy for stuff like that. Now she's talking about spending $200 on a damn cake. What kind of cake is that? Yeah, overseas is a lick, man. I guarantee you, man, when I was out there getting high, shit, there were so many dope men out there that had that kind of money, but they never left the block because that's where their business was. See, I don't want a life like that. You got all that money, but you can't go nowhere. That's why they end up getting busted. They got money where they can move to the Philippines and never be seen again. But all they do is ride around and around in circles, music booming real loud, gold rims, convertible top, all this old phony ass jewelry on, and hand themselves right over to the um, police, which, by the way, I never understood that either. If you got all this money, why in the world would you even show up for court when you know they're going to give you 40 years? But see, no one ever accused these men of being intelligent. Okay. If I had, they caught a farmer in Louisville, Kentucky several years ago. He was a farmer. He was selling drugs. And the reason they caught him, because two young guys had broken into his house. They probably knew where his stash was. Well, he killed them. And so the investigation started. Come to find out. He had $500,000 in his house. Of course, they gave him 10 years in prison. They confiscated the money. And he only got 10 years because he agreed to let them confiscate that money. Man. So, yeah, Vince, we got the money. We just do some stupid shit with it. $500,000. I'm going to have it in my damn wall. Yeah, yeah. See, they said. We don't have the resources to travel until it's time for the bros to go to Vegas or L.A. or Miami. Absolutely. That's what I'm saying. Or to the, you ain't got to go there to the damn casino. 
Man, I see people lose thousands and thousands of dollars, myself included, in a damn casino. Yeah, we got the money, guys. I promise you that. He said, Big Shirley got your money. Yeah, he said, instead of working a 40-hour week, do what I do and work a second job like I did. Wow, I work 88 hours a week frequently, man. That's crazy. But you got to do what you got to do. I don't know how you stay up. There's 168 hours in the week. So you're spending over half of it at work. Do you get to a sleep break on your job, Danny? It's a lot of damn hours, man. He said, yeah, we have the funds, but the discipline to save for expensive trip. That's it right there. Most of us don't have the discipline to save. Americans save less than any other industrialized country. Because we're raised to be consumers. We're raised to, you know, you buy an iPhone over there. It, it, come, it, it got to a point where, I don't know, somebody must have said something to Apple. But every year they were coming out with a new Apple phone. And you're like, damn, I just bought this one. It compels you to go trade that in and get another one. Same with cars. Same with that. If you don't establish the habit of saving, you'll never be successful. You'll never have anything because you have to have money to take uh, advantage of the opportunities that are going to come your way. I wasn't able to save until I got here because it's so expensive over there. And my mindset is already, you know, in that consumer mode. I had a television in every room in my house at home. We got one television here, one in the guest room, and neither one of them costs over $200. Forty years later, I'm still hearing dots and dits. Yeah, it, it's true though, guys. You know, we we got the money. We got the money. We got plenty of money. We just spend it on other things. We don't. The man was talking about weed. I know my brother spends probably all his money on weed because he has furniture running the ground. He's got to run down the ground. And this guy's a nurse. He earns good money. They can't see you. But he spends most of his money on weed. He was in the Navy. Never went overseas. He spent his eight years on land. He was a, a corpsman. And now he's a nurse. But what are you doing, Booby? Come here. You want to say hi? Booby wants to say hi before we get out here. Say hello, Booby. Let me move this out of the way. <laughs> Just say hi to everybody and get out of here. <laughs> get out of here, boo. <laughs> yeah, people playing PlayStation 5 for $570 a game. That's right. And that's what happens. When I came over here in 2018, this is the truth, man. I can easily find it if I go on Orbis.com. No, I bought it on Cheapo Air. Cheapo Air.com. I paid less than $600 each for our round trip tickets from Chicago to Cebu. And it was in December, but I bought them two months before. So you're going to tell me, Vince, that they can't afford. I paid, it might as well say $600 because I had to pay for. With cheap old air, if you wanted to change your seat, you had to pay for it. And it was $39 each. So I spent about $600 each for a round trip ticket to the Philippines. That's not a lot of money, guys. Yeah, Frankie, I, 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 I have people stand because I did the math, man. And math doesn't lie. I had about 40 people come here, all good people, and one of them, was a damn duck, weird as hell. And I wasn't gonna let one guy mess it up for everybody else. So yeah, I'd like to say sometime if that even worked out, have a great day, Cap. Yeah, come on, just give me, let me know a couple of days beforehand. If nobody's there, we can get it fixed up for you. But yeah, man. Um, 
We got the money bench. A lightning three five. Once a cow, my biggest concern is access to the money in the states while in the Philippines. What's well, no concern? Remember, the U.S. and the Philippines has a relationship that goes way back, man. A lot of what the Philippines, the, the new Philippines that you're seeing now, the independent Philippines, is built on what America does. So a lot of the banks where you are, they'll transfer it over here. Your ATM card will work over here. You got remittance places over here, Western Union, uh, Remitly, Zoom, and all of that. So why would you have a hard time having getting access to your money? It's easy. It's going to cost you, though. But, yeah, guys, I got to get off of here. It's 12 o'clock. I want to thank you all so much. For all your super chats, your super stickers, your thumbs up, all your support for Sunshine Shoulders. Let's put our heads together, guys. Let's make this passport thing work for everybody. If there's a Facebook page already, go on there and let them know, man. You know, we got to get organized. We got to come together. We can't keep on being like this, man. We got to eventually be like this. These women out there kicking behind and taking names. Okay. So let's quit arguing about the women and we don't want them and they don't want us, but that's okay. We're such a small part of the earth's population, guys. So that's not, that shouldn't even be an argument with everything that's out here. Most of the time, the odds of being in the favor of you finding whatever you're looking for, a woman, a business, the opportunity, the new life is going to be out here. It's not going to be on that dot you're living. So take care, everybody. Stay safe. Stay COVID free. I'll see you next time. Shout out to that new black travel movement. Shout out to the passport bros. And I just call them passport brides. I wasn't trying to be disrespectful, but it was just a play on words. It sounded better up against passport bros than this new Black travel movement. Peace, everybody.